Hey, if you're enjoying the content here at Dennis Sperling Unfiltered, make sure you support it by like, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. And also, hit that little notification bell in the corner so that you'll get notice of each and every one of our live feeds. What's up, fellas? This is Dennis Sperling, also known as Uncle D to the homies. And um, we've been having some very interesting conversations here over the past couple of weeks. And what I want to talk to you guys about today is um, the, the psychological change of the, of the black matriarchy. In other words, it's impossible for me to get you brothers to get on the path of peace of mind and happiness so that you can have the freedom that you deserve if your mind is still shackled down by the desires and wants and needs of the matriarchy, i.e. you're still seeking approval from the maternal figures in your life, the women in your life, period. That's not acceptable. First and foremost, you have to seek approval of God. So if you're seeking the approval of any man or woman in this case, then you're not going to have that peace of mind and happiness that God wants you to have. You'll never fulfill it because you're worshiping the wrong God. So what are we talking about today? We're talking about how to not give a hell and black men breaking the psychological chains of the black matriarchy. This is what we're talking about, fellas. We as black men seek approval of the black matriarchy. We govern our lives to please it or them. However, if you knew how fast they forget you when you die, you would stop living your life trying to impress them. How many of you all know an uncle or a father figure or, uh, or a grandfather who, oh yeah, Uncle Ned, he was great. A grandpa, such and such was great. But other than that, they never remember him. They never acknowledged that he was the one that worked for 40 and 50 years and sacrificed to, to, to build a house and pay for this and pay for that so the children could have a leg up. He's never even acknowledged. They quickly forget him. And guess who gets the credit? They get, they give mama the credit. They give big mama the credit. They give grand. If you guys knew how quickly they would forget you, they're not going to build any statues. They're not going to even celebrate your birthday. Most of them, once you get buried and long gone, they're not going to even come out and visit your grave. The grandkids and definitely the great kid grandkids don't even know your name. You might not even have a photograph in the house. So what I'm trying to tell you fellas is if, if you're living your life trying to imp impress or, or please or get validation from these other people, know that they're going to forget you very soon after. So you might as well live your life to, to, to your own satisfaction and do what it is that God wants you to do. Hopefully you realize that most of these lovely ladies, even family members and friends, only use you for your resources. That's a painful thing to understand. But like Chris Rock said, men are love conditioned. Dogs and children and women, they're loved because of who they are. Men are loved based solely on what they can produce. They love you because of your resources, fellas. Sadly, us working black men get used to and then discard, get used and then discarded by the community. More than any other group of men on, on the planet Earth, they just get rid of us. Once we become no good, they get rid of us and forget about us and move on to the next battery or utility they can use up. This is this is how we, this is what we're dealing with in 2021, black men. And we allow this to happen because we are so bound by these psych psychological chains. We've so been mind effed, right? By the, by, by, by the system, by the women that govern the system, by, the, by this community, that we are not even behaving like men. The root cause of most of the approval seeking behavior is low self-esteem. What I'm trying to tell you is fellas, black men with high self-esteem, they're not bound by the psychological chains of, black, of the black matriarch. In order to have a black boy be subject to 
the psychological ch to these these psychological chains. You got to beat his self esteem up. He has to come out the womb, and you got to be bashing him. Hell, in even in the womb, you got he. You have got to denigrate him and, and curse him and call him everything but the child of God, and tell him that he ain't gonna be nothing if you want to create another slave to this to to the black matriarch. So, you know, fast forward. One of the things we'll talk about in the next uh, part of this is how you counteract that in your sons, how you make sure they are impervious to, to those inferior, the, the sense of inferiority that arises from the factors uh, like, like uh, maybe your natural personality, um, um, external influences, such as your upbringing, your cultural experience, education and work life. These things that we as black men have to deal with. How, how was our up? Were we belittled? Were we disrespected? Culturally speaking, black men are always set third or fourth down the line behind the black girls. The biggest lie that Michelle Obama ever told was that black boys are coddled and catered to. We're not. Culturally, we're, some, we're sent out to live amongst the uh, wild, like wolves and, and coyotes. We turn loose. Black women are allowed to stay in the house and bring more babies in. And, and you know, bring more money, and that's that's how it works. Period. And you guys know that education-wise, we get an inferior education, and education is not even something that's pushed on black kids. Even in our work life, we don't get the lofty jobs, the white collar jobs. We don't get that. We get the bull crap jobs, and then we have to take low. Typically, we have to we you know jobs that we're not um, that don't even ask us to fulfill our full potential. So we, so there is also some inferior, and then it plays out. We're the ones that usually first one to get fired in the situation, last hire, first fire. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna learn how to, uh, we, first we're gonna discuss these these psychological chains and, and, and what it does to us. Th this is what we wanna do today. We wanna uh, talk about some different factors. And I gave you guys a reference, and I'm gonna break this down so brothers can understand it in terms. One of the things, um, and there's about 12 of them, and there's some different uh, resources that I've used. But one of the things I want to talk about, and well, let me say this, before we get started, I want to acknowledge um, the donation of Volcanus. Thank you so much. He said, Uncle D is a legend. Always remember that OH and hit and like button as you want to. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you, Malika, for your Cash App donation. Thank you, Marquis Simon, for your cash app donation. I appreciate you guys. If you appreciate what I'm doing, make sure you hit the like button. If you hit the like button, push number one. If you hit the like button, push number one. If you hit the like button as you came in, push number one. If you just hit the like button, push number one. Go ahead and push number one now. Push the number one button so I'll know that you guys are listening to me and I have your attention. Go ahead and hit that number one button. Hit the like button. And, and push the number one. Thumbs up. There we go. I see one. Thank you. Kicks, uh, <laughs> I can't. Kiziotic Bastard, Armini Bless, Emporia Prime. Thank you guys. Hit that Hit that like button and then hit number one so I know you did. Hit the like button and then hit number one so I know you did. All right. Thank you. Iggy Six Figures is hitting it. All right. Here's another one. Hit the subscribe button and hit number two. Hit the subscribe button and then hit number two. If you've already hit the subscribe button, hit it again and then hit number two to make sure you're subscribed. Hit the subscribe button and hit number two so I know you guys are listening. All right, I appreciate that. We want to get the subscriptions up. We've been getting 100 a day, 100 a week, and now we're getting maybe 40, 40 or 50 a week. So YouTube is definitely uh, messing around. Hit the, hit the subscribe button and hit number two. Okay, fellas? Um, all right, so let's start talking about these. Basically, what you guys, the way they have us trapped, fellas, is they are the ones we are taught to seek approval from. And so what we're doing is we're exhibiting a lot of approval-seeking behavior. One of the ways you can tell that you are somebody who is um, uh, seeking approval um, is by, take, by taking uh, a disagreement personally. That is when someone disagrees with something you've said or done. Do you take it to heart as a personal slight and feel upset or even insulted? This is a classic response for a people pleaser because the quest for approval has failed. So in other words, um, you're being chastised by 
your woman or your mother or somebody like that. And then you get emotional about it. It's not that you're overly emotional. It's that you're the type of person you want to please this person. Most men don't give a crap. Most men don't give two shakes of uh, a camel's tail whether or not their woman is happy with them or not because they're more likely to replace her if she gets out of line. So the question is, why is it that you care? You see, you're, you're trying to, you're trying to, uh, you're taking this disagreement personally. They're entitled to their disagreement, but see, when that person is God to you, when that person is a queen, you're gonna take it personally because damn near your livelihood and your life is depending on whether or not that queen is happy. And that's what we've done. We've placed these lovely ladies up on the pedestal. And so because of that, everything they say, their approval is necessary for our, our peace of mind and happiness. And that's no way to live, fellas. Okay, that's the first thing. Here's another one, changing or adapting your point of view in the face of an apparent disproval. You've voiced your opinion on some matter, important or not, and someone responds with an opposing view. Do you vigorously defend your position or find yourself softening your argument in order to fit more closely with theirs? An approval seeker's opinion changes depending on who they're talking to because they lack confidence in their own convictions and are keen uh, not to alienate others by adopting a conflicting view. Okay, so you guys, how many of you guys have had that conversation with your married friend in front of their wife? And then when that married friend gets, it's just you and the fellas all alone, then he tells the truth. So instead of telling the truth that his, his wife is overweight, obnoxious, hard to get along with lovely lady, to her, he just keeps it all to himself. He says absolutely nothing about it. But then when he gets around the fellas, then it comes out and he speaks. This is a man, right, who's seeking approval from his woman. Now, I'm not saying all men don't do this, but for the most part, as black men, we don't want to offend our moms. You know, we, we let her dictate to us uh, her point of view. Stupid stuff like, you know, uh, what's one? Something that we were all taught. Somebody hits you back, you hit them hard. That's just leading to more violence. And you wonder why we have issues in Chicago that we hit. Instead of saying, no, mom, that's not how you should handle it because somebody could get shot. This is 2021. People are not, it doesn't work like that. You got to teach these young boys how to avoid, uh, you know, these conflicts because there's women can talk and, and fight and whatever. But oftentimes men get in these, you know, situations, they have to fight it out and somebody might end up dying. So this is just a little examples. You guys can think of some more yourself. But again, changing or adapting your point of view in the face of an apparent disapproval. Another one, the Trump thing. A lot of black men really don't like Biden, but you voted for him and you, you know, you know, or you didn't vote for him, whatever. Some of you guys, are, but you you can't voice that in the black community. You can't say that. And even though many of the things that Donald Trump did benefited men in general and black men also. You know, especially American born black men. But we couldn't say anything, you know, because why? We wanted to get the approval of our women. We didn't want their disapproval. We don't want them to be mad at us. Because remember, to us, they are the all powerful. They have us bound. And remember, all this is rooted in low self esteem and a few other things. Here's another one You're afraid, you're afraid to say no for fear of disapproval. Are you a serial overcommitter? Do you always say yes when asked to do something? when your instinctive response should be no. Uh, okay, so think about it like this. <clears throat> they ask us as black men to give our all. They ask us to be uh, slim, fit, make six figures, and then settle for dating a woman who's obese, things like that. Uh, we seek their approval. Uh, we're afraid uh, to tell them no. No, I don't want to date that woman. No, I don't want to go to this event. No, I don't want to do that. And, we, you know, we can go into some interpersonal relationships, but I'm just trying to be general as possible. So this is just general statements that you will see in your own behavior. You're afraid to say no for fear of disapproval. Why is that? See, uh, well, let me. Here's the thing. At some point. You're going to begin to resent those people, which is what's happening right now. There are a lot of black men who are very angry with their mothers. They're very angry with black women in general is because they've reached the point of physical and emotional exhaustion. And the end result of this behavior uh, leads you to resent things you've committed to. You've committed to the black community. You've committed to this. You've committed to 
marrying uh, one of these lovely ladies. And even though you might not be getting a good day, you, you're tired of it. This is what's going on. Because what? Because you're afraid to say, no, that's not what I want. No, I want to raise my standards. You see what I mean? No, I want, this is what I want. You're afraid because you, again, you want that validation. Not standing up for your own rights. Being a human doormat to be walked all over by whoever chooses to do so. It's so much easier than saying, hey, no, that's not fair. Standing up for yourself. Failing to draw a line and say no just reinforces your lack of self-belief and even causes us, others to think less of you. Who in America is the whipping board? We only occupy about 26 cities on along the coast in the United States, yet we get we as black, and we are only 6% of the population, but we as black men get blamed for everything. We get blamed. If there's a crime in Idaho, then it's black men's fault. If Trump gets elected, it's black men's fault. Uh, we don't get credit for anything, but we are the whipping boys of this country. We're the doormats. And where does that start? That starts with us as little boys. That starts with, with, with the self-esteem, uh, uh, the, 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 the thrashing of our self-esteem when we're little boys. Here's another one, gaining attention or, accepting or, or acceptance through gossip. Do you feel the urge to tell tales to make yourself look better or smarter or more knowledgeable? Sharing gossip gives you the power to impress others to be to be at the center of attention and to gain kudos temporarily bolsters your low self-esteem. A lot of you brothers will sit around and chop it up with these ladies on the internet. You you chime in on, you know, who's who's they new and you you do this because you want to fit in. That's not even something that men typically do, sitting around talking to women about this actress and that actress and whatnot, even if you do it in public. It's not something that you're doing that for acceptance. That's not normal behavior that men exhibit, but we do it. And it's, it's, it's kind of, it's not something that you should be doing, fellas. It's odd, but you're doing it because you want acceptance. You're doing the same thing the women do. You're sitting around gossiping. That's not something that you should, it, it's just more, it's more behavior that shows that you're seeking validation from these lovely babies. All of this stuff, just keep thinking about it, fellas. Just keep processing. And if you have some examples of yourself doing this, let's talk about it. Here's another one. You're appearing to agree with someone verbally or non-verbally when you don't. The prime example of that, you got brothers who say uh, the whole fat shaming thing. You got women who are the size of football players, five foot eight, five foot nine, five ten, over 200 some pounds. I mean, Lawrence Taylor, what was he like, 225 pounds when he was playing linebacker? And you got a woman that's bigger than him. This is what I'm saying, fellas. You're, you're, you, and a lot of you guys, when we brothers say, yeah, you don't want to, you want a fine woman, you want a thick woman, you don't want an obese woman. What would you guys say? Well, it's somebody forever, somebody gonna like it. And, and some of you guys will agree with this or you won't outright disagree with it. So it makes it think like you do agree with it. So you appear to agree with something that you clearly don't. Most of you guys, you don't want an obese woman in your bed, period. You don't. You, you just don't, folks. All right? And so by appearing that you agree with that, it just shows that you are trying to, you want them to validate you. You're looking for their approval. And you brothers know you don't like this obesity rate in the black community. You know you don't like it. And another one, it has to do with, you know, the uh, out of, Bed, wedlock birth. Most of you guys know that if given, if it was acceptable, you would say, I'm not dating a woman with children. I don't want to deal with a woman because you know that's more expense. It's illogical for you to choose a woman who has children over a woman who doesn't have children because you know that's more expense and more family ties. You dating her and all her baby daddies and all their families. That's not, you don't do it, but you you pretend like you, you appear that you do agree because you don't want to piss them off because you're bound by those psychological chains of the black matriarchy and you need their validation. Just think about it, fellas. Another one, not complaining when you receive unsatisfactory uh, service or goods. Now, in, 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 the, in the context of the black relationships, you got a mother who was horrible. You got a wife who's horrible. You got a, a girlfriend who's uh, bitchy and, 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 and unruly and disrespectful. And you don't say anything about it, even though that's you don't want to complain. This is this is 
a sign of validation. You don't even say you so well, happy wife, happy life. These are the sort of things you do. Now we're gonna speak generally about this, but I mean in here because you know, but you guys have your own instances where you know you've dealt with that. You're dealing, you're not complaining, even though you're dealing with a, a, a horrible relationship that's not satisfying. It's it's not it's not fulfilling to you, but you're still stuck in there. Here's another pretending uh um pretending to understand something that you don't, i.e. Your woman is giving you all kind of cross talk and back talk about this and justifying something that can't even be justified. But, you know, you agree with it. like, for instance, what's the what's the we'll go back to the children. Um, you kind of you know that it's a woman who decides decides to take a child a full term. But you yet and still allow that woman to blame the man that got her pregnant for who in the first place who she didn't ask to have a where a child support you 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 clearly know that in order for her to have this child she has got to consent with the 13 different forms of birth control that's readily available including the morning after pill uh and a condom which uh, birth control also you pretend as though you understand her logic even though you know that that's just crazy that's because you don't want to offend that woman you're seeking approval that's that's a problem folks. that's not that's not that shows that you're you're praying to the wrong God, feeling the need to apologize even when there's no there's there when there's uh you know when you nobody's done anything wrong you apologizing for something that black men didn't even do. That's have a bunch of children out of wedlock. Fifty one percent of us don't have kids, right? Another twenty percent had or thirty thirty one percent are married. So you apologize for all these. Uh, what you didn't do anything? What are you apologizing? Expecting a compliment of fishing for them and being upset. Uh, so you guys are, you know, you're looking for approval for from from women. You're looking for these women to give you credit because you got a job and you went to school. And they won't. And that upsets you. I get it. That's another one. Expecting compliments of fishing for them. Women do that to women do that too. You know, they want compliments for stuff that benefits them, but failing to cope with any level of criticism, it gets to the point now. You're so frustrated when they criticize you, you're ready to explode. You see, you're ready to explode because what they say is important to you. Now, somebody on the street, your boss, they can criticize you all day. You don't care. But when your mom or your wife or somebody criticizes you, you're ready to explode. Why is that? Because you're looking for that lovely lady and her representative, the representative of, of the matriarchy. You're looking for approval from them more so than anyone else. And here's another one, behaving in a way that's contrary to your own beliefs. A lot of you guys wanna date beautiful women. A lot of you guys wanna travel overseas and date beautiful, but you don't. Why don't you do it? You don't do it because, you know, uh, you know, you don't wanna piss off the matriarch. That's, you, you, you got a woman that you might like and she might be, a, she might be light skinned. She might be from another ethnicity. She might be from another race. Um, you know, you you might be in a situation where you like her, but you can't do it because why? Because you don't want to deal with the disapproval of the matriarch. Here's another one. You might be a smart, intelligent young man, but you out here acting like a thug just because you think that this is what the matriarchy approves of. These are the psychological chains that we have to deal with. Another few points that, that I want to bring up before we open it up, and I'm going to go ahead and put the link in the chat room now. Because I want to talk about this, guys. I want you guys to take notes. Because you know, right now we're talking about we're identifying, you know, these psychological chains. We're identifying um, things that that you do, you know, that show that you do have. Because a lot of you guys, like Harriet Tubman said, you know, I, I freed a lot of slaves, but I could have freed a lot more if they'd known that they were slaves. And some of you guys don't realize that you've been mind fucked. Excuse me for using that language. But here's here's some other signs that you can tell. I want you to listen to this. Um, you know, lack of achievement, lack of personal, or, or better yet, let's say, approval is like a killer drug. You know, it becomes addictive and you quickly develop a need for more. When you have when you have a need for approval, you value the beliefs and opinions and needs. As, as, as related to black men or black women above your own. 
So you value you value the, the needs of these lovely ladies over your own. Their opinion of, of their opinion is far more important to you than your own view of yourself. Receiving, in other words, they get to judge you and tell you, oh, you're not a real man. You you will believe them telling you you're not a real man over you, or what you believe yourself to be as a man. Receiving disapproval becomes a painful experience. When these lovely ladies reject you, it's painful. When they tell you you're not good enough, it's painful. They call you a poopy, a ray ray, a scrub, uh, effeminate. Uh, what, are the, what else are they called? Beta male. Oh, that just crushes you. Your entire decision making processes are eventually taken over by your need to approve these lovely ladies. This is this is black men. You cannot take any decisive action without their approval. In other words, you don't want to offend them. You you got to get approval from from these lovely ladies in order for you to even move forward. You know, you, you, you remain within these cultural bounds in this social contract that we've already discussed over the past couple of weeks that has been breached. You cannot take any decisive action without their approval. You, you, if it's not a pre-approved, you ain't doing it. You sacrifice your own dreams and ambitions in order to have their approval. You get married. You stay in Detroit. You stay in Chicago. You stay in Little Haiti. You do everything you possibly can. You stay where you stay here. Why? You stay here. Because this is what they approve of. You don't marry out to race. You don't you don't buck the system. You don't do anything. You keep it as is. You don't even complain. Amongst the negative consequences of approval seeking behavior amongst black men that we can see, because we're trying to, to appease the black matriarch, lack of achievement. How many of you brothers just said, you know what? I can't please them, so I ain't gonna even try them. Lack of achievement, lack of personal fulfillment. Many of you are unhappy right now. Why? Because you've been trying to please them so long, you can't even please yourself. Low self-esteem and confidence levels. We are the first men on this planet. We are the fathers of everybody on this planet. Why is it that we have this low self-esteem and our confidence levels, even though we're presented with the opportunity, look how high we rise. Reduced performance. You're not even motivated to be the best man you can be. And here's the biggest one, the thing that's killing most of us all. Increased stress, which leads to overeating, leads to to diabetes and all these cardiovascular diseases and, and causes us to kill, die off of. This is what I'm telling you guys. This is where we are. Uh, shout out to Zoe MGTOW. Shout out to all the MGTOWs. I appreciate you guys, man. Brilliant philosophy. I think every man should take the time to really understand MGTOW. Whether or not they apply it in their lives or not, it's definitely a brilliant philosophy that I think that um, needs to be analyzed, you know, in, in, in all the sociological spheres of study. Um, thank you so much. He says, uh, for the passport gang, do I have a dream speak? <laughs> I have a dream. I'm going to do that again one day. <laughs> but anyway, Kay Hofton says, appreciate all you do up to be. So, uh, guys, uh, what we're talking about today, hey, Dicky, how you doing, Malek? Anybody else who wants to join? Thanks, brother. All right. Anybody Hello. else wants to join in? The link is in the chat room. I want to hear stories. I want to hear where you have sit, sought the validation of these lovely ladies and you looking back at it now. This is what I want you to do. Coming from this perspective, now that you've been awakened, now that you recognize that these are psychological chains, I'm not really living for my life. I look, I'm going to tell I'll give you an example. Back in law school, I was at Southern. We had a lot of women from other ethnicities, a lot of white women. Those white women respect, they respected me, they appreciate my conversation in class, the way I would interact with the, with the professors. They really appreciate it, but I would never date any of them. Reason being, this is not acceptable. You see, I can't date one of these white women, even though I probably have a lot more in common with them than I did some of the sisters at the time. Reason being, because I knew what I wanted to do. I was going straight to the top. I wasn't going to go work for somebody's defense firm. I was going to get out there and start my own and I was going to be the man and I, I was going to be where I am today, you know, and I'm sure had I hooked up with a like minded woman at that time, I would you, the sky's the limit. But I didn't date any. I didn't even I didn't even consider dating any one of those white law student women just because it was not acceptable. The, the matriarchy does not accept that. So, you know, that's just me. I'm sure I you guys have other stories. And, I, and of course, I was seeking their approval, i.e. my mom, my sisters, and all the other 
black women around. We don't want to deal with that. We want to seek, we seek their approval. But other men don't. They really don't care. Other men around, their culture tells them, you don't give a crap what a woman thinks. Matter of fact, they treat them like second and third class citizens for the most part, without opinion. They don't care, and they better not say anything. This is how they treat them. But we, on the other hand, we don't put our women four or five steps ahead of us. We treat them like they're goddesses and queens, and, and so we're always seeking their approval. So how do we, these are some of the psychological chains, those 12 things I talked about. What do you think, Deacon? And then we'll go to Malika. And anybody else who wants to join in, fellas, I tell you guys, and I speak from the heart because I expect you guys to speak from the heart. The only way we can begin to heal ourselves and heal each other is begin to talk about these experiences. Talk, be specific. You don't have to name names, but be specific. Open up because I promise you there's a large percentage of black men out there who've experienced the same thing that you're experiencing, and there's no need to be embarrassed about it because we're all dealing with the same circumstances. But Diki, when, when, when have you caught yourself, give us a past experience, where you caught yourself trying to appease, appease the matriarchy or trying to be seeking validation from uh, or, or conforming to what they want, even if it goes against your interest? Your thoughts, go ahead. Okay, Dennis, this, this speaks, oh wow, this is deep. Uh, <clears throat> I'm from Baltimore, had a masculine mother, oh my, scared everybody in the family, everybody, sisters, brothers, uh, mother, my brother, my sister, me? No, 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 no. I had to get great grades, perfect, perfect attendance, because my plan was getting out of the house, joining the Air Force. I think I, I'm an October baby, so I signed up at 15, but I, mm. but, I, but I went in at 18. So I had this mother that did not love me, period. I'm, I, and this is, this is kind of hard to share. I don't, I, I don't want to be too transparent, but hey man, it, it, it is what it is. I survived it, I'm good. And other guys, you have to do this too, because yeah, you love your mother. Yeah, you love your mother, but um, when you don't have a mother's love, oh damn, don't say that. Everybody, you don't like your mother. You're the, hey man, hey man, that's my walk, that's my walk, whatever. But had to get out of the house, perfect grades for school, a college, had the grades, had the attendance, went to the Air Force, her rules, everything she said was, it's my house. You don't do that, you're out of the house. I'm like, damn, I really should have, I looked back and I said, I really should have lived with my father's mo uh, mother and father. They were still alive. I'm like, Cause this ain't my house. But see, women do that. Like if it's your child, they say my baby, but wait a minute, it's our baby. It's shaming tactics that we men, oh wow, okay mom, no, I'm not him. Well not, Dickie, that's, that's about control. Remember I talked to you guys about that before? They wanna control their bodies and your body and everything associated with them and everything associated with them. That's what it's about. Her saying this is my child is just them, her telling you what's in her psychology. This is my child to control. That's what that is. But go ahead, please continue your story. That's that you're absolutely right. I had to get out of Baltimore to become my man. My man, not not her, not her man, not her. Went to Baltimore, left house at 18, joined the Air Force. I'm in, I'm in Europe from 18 to 20. I'm in Paris, London. Amsterdam, I'm looking at the Mona Lisa, I'm looking at Buckingham, I'm like, I'm a man. <laughs> this this wasn't a plan because the Air Force just sent me to, the, to Europe. They just sent me to Europe. I mean, but, so instead of me being in college, I'm in Europe, drinking everything, tricking a little bit. You know, I, I'm not perfect, Uncle D, don't judge me, or ju I don't care. So I'm not, and, that, and that's another thing, like, one, one of these points is, and we'll get to this tomorrow or later when I do that, the way you break the chains of, of these psych psychological chains is you basically stop, you, you don't ask for, you don't ask for permission anymore. You see what I'm saying? And you don't care about what they have to say to you. You see, but we'll talk about that later on. This is the first part. Right now, we're just talking about our examples of how when we try to please the matriarch, yes. we try to please them. But go ahead. Okay. Oftentimes impossible to please, but go ahead. The, the net net of it is, you know, um, I'm, I'm a tired air force. Everything I did, I did. Now, um, 
now my life is like a movie. So then I learned about business. So I created 60 businesses, 60 businesses from air, six zero. I talked to my mother. She's like, yeah, that's what I taught you. And I didn't say oh. anything. I didn't say anything, Uncle D. I didn't say anything. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, wait a minute. Hold on. I couldn't wait to get out of here. But you're going to take the. Hey, OK. All right. OK. She'll be 80 next month. You, you know what? But see, but see, let me let me give you something. What, what one of the first rules I said, right? You were looking for validation from her by telling her you started 60 businesses. That was what you were doing. You were looking for a validation. You said you were seeking her approval. Mom, look. I started 60 businesses. And what did she do? Instead of saying, great job, you did a great job. What did she do? She said she took credit for it. Oh, you got that from me. Yeah. So she didn't give you that validation that she wanted, and it made you upset. You see what I mean? Because you were seeking her validation. And that's why I think, let me give you this point again. Um, well, go ahead. Keep talking, man. But I'll give it to you again uh, where, where I was talking about that. Uh, oh, man. Not complaining. But yeah, that's what you were doing. I'll, I'll find, it's on that list that I read. But go ahead, man. I didn't mean to cut you off. Okay. See, see, and see, here's the crazy thing. Some women that I've met, oh, oh, okay, during my travels overseas, I learned to love myself in 1986. Before 86, I didn't even like myself. If you said you didn't like me. And, and, like and, and what you're saying, brother, is you had low self-esteem. Yes, and that's that Right. And that's how that, that's how they groom us to be compliant and, and to accept these chains. You, you, bro, I'm telling you, you're right on it. I mean, go ahead. I, I, I'm just, I'm stopping you to point out what you're saying. You're basically, uh, you're a testimony to everything that we're talking about. And you're not the only one, but go ahead. I, I'm the poster child of what you're talking about. Yesterday, I yeah. put in the chat, I put in the chat, I had to go to church every Sunday. She's a Sunday school teacher. But y'all didn't live with your Sunday school teacher. Y'all don't see her life. See, here's the thing. Malcolm and, and Ali were demonized in my house. They were demonized. But the white Jesus, not the Jesus on the cross, not the baby Jesus, not the Jesus off the cross. This white Jesus? I and and, and can, uh, we, can we say why that is? It's because even though those were amazing black men, right? They could never receive credit. You see, they could never receive approval. They, the antithesis of those men, this racist imagery, you know, of this, of this, of this, at the time, this racist imagery, you know, of, of, of the, a picture of the people who had kidnapped and helped kidnap and oppress our people. That's who you venerate. That's who you uplift. Not these freedom fighters, not these men who did amazing things physically and mentally, not these people who pulled themselves up from nothing that look like you. Why is that? Because by giving him credit, by giving Malcolm and Ali credit, they're vicariously giving you credit and validating your existence. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying, bro? I mean, it's all right there, man. It, the chains are on, and I hope you tune in later on, but we'll be right back to you in a minute. We'll go to Malika. But we'll be we're gonna talk later today about how you break those chains finally. And you're already steps ahead of most, but give me a minute. We're gonna to talk to Malika. Thank you so much. Just hang in there, okay, DP. We'll be right back. Cause see, hey, Malika, this is one of those conversations where brothers got a lot to say. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Because they've been living this and nobody is allowing them to speak. You see what I mean? This is why this is such a personal conversations with so many brothers. And that's why I'm telling you, man, it's okay to open up. It's okay. Some of you guys are going to hear this and uh, y'all going to go in a quiet place later on. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but soon. And you're going to reflect. And it's okay to emote. It's okay to maybe have a few tears off by yourself somewhere when nobody's looking. Because this conversation after you hear what the rest of these brothers got to say, and look, I can't tell the future, but I already know what they're going to say. But um, go ahead, Malika, man. It's on you, man. What 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 do you have to contribute to this as far as your own personal experience, experiences seeking validation? And I know you got a story. You oh, see yeah. what I'm saying? Doing things that you know that, you know, go against what you believe in because you're trying to seek validation. Well, go ahead, bro. Go ahead. I remember um, I had a ex and this is when I was a police officer and I mm -hmm. got finished doing the night shift, I came home, got up, hit the gym, 
and I went to bed and I didn't call it. And this is, and I get a phone call maybe around six in the evening and it was her. And she's like, Hey, how you doing? She's like, you, what's going on? I said, not much. She's like, what's up with you? I didn't hear from you then. I said, Oh man, I, I did some running around today. I got off. I hit the gym, came in. And I was just tired. And, you know, I just forgot to call you. And she's like, I'm unforgettable. And I'm like, what? She says, no, I'm unforgettable. And I said, look, I told you I got tired. And she said, I don't care about that. I'm unforgettable. And from that went on and got an argument and she started going off. And right then and there, that was a red flag. But I didn't hang up on her. I started apologizing because mm -hmm. I had low self-esteem. Mm. And from that point on, I was thinking if I don't, part of my mind, the, 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 the mature, masculine, strong, red pill part of me was like, hang up and leave this woman alone. Feeling but, the need to apologize even when you've done nothing wrong. No matter exactly. what has happened, whether, you're not, whether or not you have had, you have had any hand in it. In, in and no word to blame, you still, people, you still want to please this woman by apologizing because she represents the matriarch. And here was the biggest thing. If I don't follow her, I ain't going to have nobody. I'm not good enough. Yeah. Thinking about this. Now, mind you, this is a woman who has a 16-year-old son. Mm. She's divorced twice. I have no children. I'm a 10 year veteran in the police department, have my own home, making close to, was I making close to 70, $72,000 a year. You already near the top, you about the top 12% of black men in America with that salary. And I Go was, ahead. I was, 38, 39 at the time. Mm -hmm. But I didn't realize I was the prize. This further went along with this with this woman where she gaslit me a lot. She was just total control. I was the puppet on the strings. I'll give you another um example when any time it was her birthday her kid's birthday or a family member's birthday it was all or nothing doing something for her doing something for everybody else but since we had a tumultuous relationship if it dealt with anything with me it wasn't worthy i might have gotten mm. hard now mind you i'm taking her out yeah, I had yeah. no problem taking her out. I was breaking her off money, doing them and stuff. Now, many times we would break up, we get back together again. But if it was, it was always something going on, some drama. Mm -hmm. And that was the key is that she lived for drama. She lived for just to be on the edge and wanted to start something. But this right. was, here what I had to say. It was my fault because I didn't notice that. And I didn't check it in the beginning, but it's not I, your it, fault. It's not your fault. It's her fault. It's not your blame. It's her. She's the human being that did that. Hmm. It's not your fault. It's her fault. That's one of the other things of the. So they get us to accept all the responsibility for the crap that they're doing. And they have it's no their fault, ability. brother. That's yeah. toxic behavior. And it's not your fault that she's exhibiting toxic behavior. Oh, and can I say another thing, man? Of course you can. Um, here's one thing I know is, and I and I I'm with, to the brothers on the panel and to the brothers in the chat and to you. Have you ever done anything and everything, whatever it is that they needed? You you bent over backwards, you did this, you did that, and you never heard a thank you. Oh yeah. I remember um, she had uh, she wanted to get one of those um, propane stainless steel um, grills. Right. Mm -hmm. And we wind up getting it. And it took me maybe like about half an hour to put it together. And mm -hmm. she was upstairs on the phone with a friend. And, you know, I'm putting this stuff together and, you know, I'm cutting my fingers on the stainless steel edges and putting everything together and 
hooking it up and everything, and I got it together. And she was like, oh, that's cool. That's what's up. I'm like, you you going to say thank you? And she's like, why? You, you're supposed to do that. And right then and there, you want to talk about feeling small. Right. Small. Ain't that something, man? It, she treated you basically like you a dog that just barked at a neighbor. That's your job. Mm -hmm. that, that's why I allow you to be around me, surf. Say that again? That's why I allow you to be around me. She had that attitude, that, that narcissistic no. attitude. No, it, it's, it's more than a narcissist. They believe that they're better than you. They believe exactly. that they own you. They believe that they control everything about you and they're doing you a favor by doing it. This is what the cycle, this is what the black matriarchy teaches them, that we are there to serve, to die at their bidding. And what I'm telling you, brothers, the only reasons that they're able to do that is because you've been brainwashed into believing that this is acceptable. No other men on this planet, not our African brothers, not our, our, our South America, none of, nobody else thinks like this other than black American men. And it takes you actually leaving the matrix. It takes you actually leaving and immersing yourself in a different culture around men who are normal and not so uh, beaten down and, and downtrodden to realize how you're supposed to be treated, which is why it's so dangerous for black men to begin to travel because brothers like me are going overseas and then we're coming back reporting to you what we're seeing. And we're telling you, I'm not gonna deal with that anymore. And let me tell you why, because now the chains have been, the keys, I've, I received my keys, I've unlocked these chains, and I'm trying to tell you, here's the key for you. But a lot of brothers don't know they have chains on. And that's why I'm telling you. Uh, thanks, Malika, man. We're going to get back to you in a minute. Bobby Bauman, thank you for patiently waiting. Uh, unmute yourself, please. Uh, and let's continue this conversation. But before we do, I do not want to run any commercials. I want this conversation to be fluid. Please send contributions to the Cash App and PayPal. I want to acknowledge those who contributed um, since the last time. Uh, let me see here. We have, uh, uh, oh, my God. I'm sorry about that. We got, um, excuse me, guys. I apologize, but I want to make for Z Quincy. We got you. Thank you so much, Quincy. And who else contributed to the Super Chat? Um, R. Roji, the Outlaw 83, thank you so much. And of course, Bobby Bowen. So thank you guys. Please continue with the super chat and the cash outs in the paper. Bobby Bowen, we are talking about the chains of psychological, the psychological chains placed around our heads by the black matriarchy, beginning as young boys. We've had both of these men, myself included, Diki and Malika and myself. Our self-esteem was messed with when we were young. We, we were... We were treated, you know, differently. We were treated like, you know, we we were treated poorly, and that messed with our self esteem. But go ahead, man. What what are your thoughts on this subject? And can you give any specific situations that you can talk about? Uh, yes, I can. Um, if you allow me to 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 break it down for you, go ahead. Because you know, like after I got divorced. And that was a pretty bad situation that I was in because it was a settled marriage. And I helped my, my ex-wife who came from a different country bring her son over here. Yeah. And as soon as I helped her do that, the relationship changed. She lost all type of respect for me. She taught her son to disrespect me. She wouldn't listen to me. And then it got bad to the point where I had to leave. And mm -hmm. after I got divorced, you know, like I tried to enter the dating scene again, mm -hmm. which is difficult in, in your late 30s. Um, and, you know, like I would go out and, 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 you know, like spend all types of money, you know, right. trying to impress. And then at the end of the day, the same women would end up with different men than me that didn't spend any of that money or effort. Right. Yeah. And then like I have a preference, you know what I'm okay. saying? And, and 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 I don't care about getting bashed for it. 
because right. I've told people that I, you know, like I don't, I don't want to date a woman that's morbidly obese. Now, right. I understand that there's members in my family that are morbidly obese and they were offended by it, but mm -hmm. it wasn't personal. It's just my preference. You know what I'm saying? I love them as human beings. I love my family members as my family members, but I know what I like and what I dislike. Right. And, you know, it's people that found that, that out about me and they used it against me. And they, they tried to force me to date somebody who was not only morbidly obese, but had multiple children with different men. Oh. And they publicly humiliated and shamed me to the point to where I was getting nasty looks and attitudes everywhere I went. Even when I was in uh, physical therapy, I was wow. being bashed about it. To the yeah. point to where I was already upset about different circumstances in my life, but it did bring me to that rage that I told you about when I when I had randomly slammed the dude around my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so I had like, and I still remained polite with the woman who kept pressing on me and kept pushing herself on me until she finally understood that it wasn't going to happen. She was mad about it. Her friends had to tell her, like, hey, there's nothing that you could do to change his opinions is, is that, you know, and it's like this. I take rejection all the time. You know, I even right. take rejection after spending my time and effort and money into like a, a situation. Mm -hmm. But with women, it's like they don't know, like they don't. It's harder for them to uh, to, to handle rejection because from they you, feel it's harder for them to handle yeah. rejection from you as a black man because they think they're better than you, even if they have multiple children, even if they yes. are morbidly obese. Okay, yeah. what I'm showing you, brother, because go ahead and finish, and I want to I want to definitely address what you're talking about. This is very oh important. yeah, oh yeah. I mean, but I was saying like yes, you're correct about that. They like the women do think that they're better than us. And that we should just bow down to them. Like protecting black women isn't about protecting them physically. It's about bowing down to them, giving them your resources and, and doing things the way that they want you to do. They want control over not only your body, but your mind, over what you say, how you act, how you dress. You know, they, they want you to be just a robot, a battery. And that's what it is. And... And, and, and it's harder for them to accept when a guy that, that had low self-esteem growing up, that had these type of issues and situations happen to them, finally just accept who he is as a man and deal with the, the, the BS that comes along with it, being a black man, the BS that comes along with it. But that's I, all I got to say. Well, Bobby, I want to just say thank you for your courage. Thank you for being honest with us because you're not the only one. I'm the, I've been the same way. I promise you. I was the one popping bottles in the clubs and trying to seek approval from people, trying to, you know, trying to make people happy. I'm the pleaser. I was that guy. Matter of fact, it got so bad. I used to refer to myself as the facilitator. OK, I would have people over my house. I would spend thousands of dollars for house parties. Um, I would go to the club. I spent six, seven thousand dollars in the club on drinks and champagne. Go home with nobody. You see what I'm saying? But I'm the facilitator. So everybody else comes and parties around me. Now, I would justify that by saying, well, some of these people are potential clients. Some of these people, you know, might bring me a case. And, you know, it's good to have people want to be around you, especially you in the public eye. And you need the public. You, you rely on the public. But at the end of the day, Bobby, I was doing it seeking validation. You see what I'm saying? So I was doing it seeking approval. I understand where you're coming from. And I'm you're not the only one, and I'm not the only one. But your bravery, you see, is what's necessary. Because see, now we can address that. Now you brought a woman from another country. Where was she from? Uh she was she like I didn't bring her from the, the country. She was already oh. here. Okay, but she was from uh, she was from Liberia. She was from Africa. She was an African, a West African woman from Li Liberia. Here's what I want you to understand: those men treat those women horribly over there. Okay, so this is something. This post I put up here on March 9th at 9:35 p.m. 
There's no geographical solution to an emotional problem. All right. Women trying to get men, specifically black men, to seek their validation is not something that's germane to the United States, but it's rampant here in the United States among black America. But other women will see that. Other women will see that I can take advantage of this guy. He's seeking my approval and they will treat you like a child. And then once they get what they want from you, they'll disrespect you, just like our own women disrespect us. See, the difference between what you did and what I did was I went to their country, I immersed myself in the culture, I saw, well not Liberia, but I went to these Latin American countries where they're Afro-Latinos and Afro-Latinas, and I saw how those men treated those women, and I let those women treat me the way that those men were treated in their country. Even the littlest of boys are treated with respect, all the way up to elderly. Not because they've done anything, because the role of a man is to be respected. You don't, a lot of women will tell you, oh, you gotta earn my respect, that's not true. Just like you don't have to earn my protection if I see a woman out on the street and she getting beat up, Either I'm going to come help her, or I'm going to feel real bad about not helping because I know that's part of what I'm supposed to do as a man is protect the women and the children. The child doesn't have to do anything to earn my protection. They're a child. That's what I'm supposed to do. By, by, by using that as an example, as a man, you're entitled to respect from the women and children of your tribe, at least. But they say, no, you got to earn it. And here's the crazy thing. The more you do to earn respect, the more they require you to earn the respect. Yeah, you got to run to the 100 yard line and get you a touchdown. No, no, yeah, you got to the 100 yard. But now you got to run to the 120 yard line and do 15 backflips. Uh, okay, you did that. Well, now you got to run 200 yards in order to get my respect. So they keep moving the goalposts, Bobby. This woman simply recognized that you had an emotional problem and that you seek to. You seek the validation of, of black women or women, right? Probably stemming from your upbringing. And she used that against you. And then once she was able to do that, she lost respect for you. Is this making sense, bro? Yes, it is. It's making sense. All right. So you want to make sure that later on today, this evening, you watch how we break these psychological chains. Because as I said, there's no real geographical solution to an emotional problem. You're going to have to begin to change. You're going to have to unlock those. You're going to, first of all, recognize that you have those chains on you, those psychological chains put on in place by the black matriarch. But you're going to have to break that because all that's going to happen with all these brothers traveling around overseas, y'all taking that same foolishness, that same, that same desire to please and seek validation from women overseas. And you're going to mess these people's countries up just like we messed up this one. Instead of instead of changing yourself or at least going there and inheriting what they're doing, you're going to go over there and start doing what you've been doing over here. So I'm just telling you guys. So that's why it's important as we mature and as we grow over the next 10, 15 years, as black men begin to travel, over, we go there with the right mindset. But in the meantime, thank you, Bobby. I'm going to go to Afro Patriarch next. You guys, if you appreciate the content, contribute to the Super Chat. That's the most you can do. Here's another thing. I need you guys to hit the like button. Hit the like button, hit the like button, and then push number one. Hit the like button and then push number one to let me know you hit the like button. Hit the like button and then push number one. Here's another thing I need you guys to do. Hit the subscribe button and push number two. Hit the subscribe button and push number two. That's what I need you guys to do right now. Hit the like button and then hit number one. Hit the subscribe button and hit number two. Go ahead and do that right now. Let's get the likes up. I don't want to run any commercials. I want to keep this conversation fluid. All right, Afro Patriot, how you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. Uh, this conversation hits home. Let's this hear conversation, it. This home, growing up here in the United States, it, it hits home. You know, yeah. growing up in Haiti uh, for, I think, two years, though I was young, very young, I still remember how the men were treated. Mm -hmm. uh, even the guests, the male guests. I, you know, t tables were, were put out. Uh, food was made. Um, you know, the person 
was treated, even he was the groundskeeper. He was a man. He was treated with respect. Mm -hmm. um, there was a level of class. And this is a third world country. This is a country where people say it's poor, right. but they're rich in culture. They're rich in culture and class. And um, here, there's no class. I know it's because it's because there's a hatred from the patriarchy. There's, yeah. a, there's a hatred for well, they, they like the white pay, they like white men. They want they like the patriarch. They like the white patriarch. They just don't like black men. They don't respect black men. They don't feel right. as though they even you as a as a black Haitian man of Haitian descent. Now mm -hmm. you up here with us. They feel the same yeah. way about you as they feel yeah. about me. Now maybe amongst oh, yeah. And oh, even yeah. amongst your own Haitian women, as they come here to this country and they get indoctrinated. It only takes a couple this, years. It only you know, takes a couple yeah. years. Mm -hmm. And you know what? And you know what? Um, there's two things that are going to happen. Two things. Either they're going to get the their, their sense of smacked right back into them, mm -hmm. smacked right back into them, or they're just going to run off and let you know the, the other women in their families back home ain't going to want anything to do with them. That means well, that me, no financial support. Let me say it like this, man. Like let me say it. Once a good girl is gone, she's gone forever. Gone forever. Once they've been immersed into this <clears throat> black matriarch, ain't no saving. That's why I'm telling you, and many of the brothers will agree, there's no saving the the black community as it exists. This ADOS, FDA, ain't no there's, saving. There's no, they, they, we, I, I said this. I yeah. said, what we need to do, I don't even need a hundred. I mean, uh, there I, always I mean, will be Africans present here, in the United States. Nice there state. always will be. We'll always be on this planet. But this little 2% or 1% of the African diaspora referred to as American descendants of slaves, it's going to be washed away because you got Africans and people of African descent coming over here and their families are still intact. And a family is always going to be the community filled with women and children and no men. That's not a family. That's just women and children. You know what's you sad? The structure. You know, so it's going you know to sad, be then? washed away. But go ahead. You know what's sad? The Edo's women are treated by the African men in Atlanta. They're treated like whores. Yeah. They're treated like whores. They will never be married to them. They will never have a side to them. And even if they do side to them, they would be seen as bastards and cast aside. And I've seen it too many times among the, the wealthy uh, African men. They yeah. just don't, they just don't, once they did a little disrespect, just a little bit. It, there was a wealthy African man in Florida who helped uh, Edel's woman with her business. But that one little disrespect, he was done. Is that the billionaire that? black man who, who yes. he had her as a side chick and he was married? Yeah, and he, yeah. she was disrespectful, and he was done. Done. She was on the she was on the uh, Instagram like making some oh thank you for this, thank you for that. He didn't care. He was done. Mm -hmm. See, here's the thing, brother. And, and again, I said this earlier today. When you have you're dealing with black American men. That's different than dealing with black men from other countries. They have self-esteem. They were raised to have self-esteem. They were raised under respect. They saw how their fathers were treated, their uncles were treated. They were treated differently, even they, even if they're dirt poor. We as black American men, we are some of the wealthiest black men on this planet, pound for pound. We got more money, we got more millionaires, but we are the most disrespected black men on this planet too. And we try the hardest and we give the most. You see, even you now, you're experiencing that as a man of Haitian descent, a brother from. I was, Boston I was, Coast. I was, I was, uh, I was dealing with that back in the first grade. Mm -hmm. uh, I did get uh, back in the first. I remember I went to all Haitian school, yeah. private school, yeah. and then when I went to public school with other innocent things, I was that I dealt with early with disrespect. Right. But the only ones who did show me any slight respect were white and Asian girls. Yeah, who showed me any it. slight respect? The Edo's girls didn't. I mean, they went out of their way to just be, humiliate me because, because of, I, the, I same, the same I culture a, that the same culture that belittles black men and messes with our self esteem tells teaches them that they're better than us, teaches yep. them that they should be treated different, and that's why you know that's that's the only way they can maintain these psychological chains that they have. This that's the only way it works. So and, um, and you know what? You know what's funny? When I was nineteen, and I was dating an Edo's girl, and she, I found out she was doing some 
heinous sexual stuff, just stuff that you know that technically you're gonna catch SD and she did. Mm. Um, I told her about it. She looked at me like I had no right to tell her that. I said, honey, I see you chasing me. I I I, I put a, I laid all the cards on the table. I see you chasing me, trying to holler at me, and at the same time, you're messing with even you're messing with all these dudes, even dudes on my basketball team, and you you're telling me I don't have a right. I'm saying this is what it is. And when I go and when I'm done with you, I don't want to stop talking to you. This is the reason why. Well, see, she bro, still didn't she's, get it. She's not, you're not supposed to be, she's not supposed to seek your approval. You're supposed to seek her approval. You see, that that was the whole thing. That, why, that was, why are you even talking to me like that? Because not, you don't you know, seek you know my funny? approval. I don't seek your approval. I'm better than you. You seek my approval. You're 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 a concu surf in my eyes. You, and you, you, and that's and you know, it. Dennis, and you know, Dennis, we as men in this country, no matter what our ethnic backgrounds are, we are going to have to work together. I'm not worried about the other 44 million black, uh, um, uh, 22 mil, 20 million black dudes. I'm worried about the 1 million who are looking for a place where they can network with other black men and feel united and strong and build something like this, what you're building. You're building a network, a strong emotional network and support. We, we need would, this space. We yeah, need I, this space. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to give it all that credit, but all I'm doing is providing an opportunity for you brothers to speak, you know, and I and I believe that it's helpful because remember, you can't you keep all this bottled up, eventually you're going to explode on somebody and it's most likely going to be somebody that looks like you another black man. So I'm selfish and I'm doing this for my own self-preservation and for that of my own sons, you see? So don't give me that much credit. You know, all praises go to God. That's what I'll say. But um, I appreciate the compliment. I don't want to see, you know, but all the praise goes to God, but I'm not, I'm not that, you know, I'm, I'm just, just like you, bro. I hope one of y'all come take my spot at some point. Um, but thank you so much, man. What else you like to add before we go to DQ? Um, yeah, man. Today, I had some good news. Uh, my portfolio just hit 45K. That's a $5 investment. Awesome. Not 11, 11, uh, what, 11, 12 months ago? 45K. I'm sitting here with a big cheese grin. No, I'm telling you, man, a fat, loud, la uh, lovely lady come through here and call me all types of names, and I'll still have a big smile on my <laughs> face, man. Not nothing can all bring right, me man. down today. Hey, hey, man, nothing like money to make you feel good about it, man. But, but you also, man, keep working. We all, we all with you on your weight loss journey, man. So keep drinking. Even if you're not working out, you keep drinking that water. Even if you're not working out three times a day. At least get 30 right, well, minutes. I got to be a jar right here. I'm looking at a big jar right across from me. All right, man. Cool, man. So, look, we got a couple of uh, – we got three people here. You know, we got Diki, we got Malika, and we got Afro Patriarchy. I need you guys to contribute to the Super Chat and the Cash Shout. I don't want to run any commercials. I just want to – so go ahead. Well, I guess I better run a commercial. Y'all uh, – Boy, y'all to death. Here we go. Hey, what's up, everybody? If you appreciate the format and you appreciate what we're doing here, then make sure you contribute to the Cash App. Make sure you contribute to the PayPal. Make sure you donate to the Super Chat. It's only you and your contributions that keep this thing going. Thanks. Hey, if you're enjoying the content here at Dennis Sperling Unfiltered, make sure you support it by like, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. And also, hit that little notification bell in the corner so that you'll get notice of each and every one of our live feeds. The only time black men are allowed to speak is when it benefits others. So hey, this is your opportunity to speak. I wanna hear from you. And if you wanna make this voice louder and clearer, then what you need to do is contribute to the Cash App, the PayPal, and the Super Chat. I appreciate you. Thank you everybody for your contributions. I appreciate it. Let's keep it going. Donate to the Super Chat. Donate to the PayPal. Donate to the Cash App. It's your contributions and your donations that are cause for this platform to grow. Let our voice be the voice, the preeminent voice in Black America. Hi, my name is Dennis Berlin. I'm not a lawyer, but my daddy is. Yeah. If you've been hurt in a car accident, then call my daddy. No need to scream and yell like a little kid. Yeah, I know you My daddy will fight for your rights. Yeah, fight for your rights. If you've been involved in a car accident, call my daddy, return in Dennis Berlin. Hello, I'm attorney Dennis Berlin. 
you've been injured in a car wreck, call me, 713-229-0770. Call my daddy, daughter, daddy. Oh, hold on, that's not a commercial. I don't know how that ended up on it. My bad. I apologize for that. Oh my God. I apologize for that. I don't know what was that. I don't know where that came. Oh. Oh my goodness. Let me stop. Anyway, for I want to add a little levity to this conversation. So uh anyway, so fellas, we talked about how to not give an F black men breaking the psychological chains of the black matriarchy. In two minutes, Dinky, tell us what you've picked up in this conversation. We're going to have the second part later on tonight, what we can do to break these chains. But given you got two minutes, Dickie, yes, what, what, uh, what have you learned from this conversation? Not only have I learned, but I live. Here's, here, here's the thing. Uh, uh, I'm a king. I love myself. Nobody is going to insult me because I, I French toast with myself. Everybody's not going to like you, kings. You're going to die. There's going to be people at your funeral that did not like you, but they're going to want for their lunch tomorrow, chicken salad and uh, aluminum foil. If people don't like you, that's not your problem. Any, any female in your family that has insulted you or, or females in the future that's insulted you, that's a test. You tell her, Hey, I love me. Hey, take care and walk away. And they're going to pull you to them and then they're going to say, hey, I just told you I didn't like you. Here's the thing. That's not my problem. God bless you. Brothers, did you hear me? That's my two minutes. I hope y'all heard me. All right. I appreciate that. You guys want to do a private consultation. You want to talk about a lot of these issues, man. I've been through it. Trust me. I've talked to thousands of black men over the past 10, 11 years. And, you know, I've heard it all. And I, fortunately, I've been able to talk to people that talk to black men especially and, and give them a word of life to get them back on the path. If you guys want to talk to me, you want to have a private consultation, or if you want to get a company started, you want I can form your corporation for you in any state, uh, whatever you want to talk about. You can email me at sperlingdennis at gmail.com. I'll send you a quote uh, for my hourly rate. And uh, also, um, you know, if you want some legal services or whatnot, then I can perform those. I'll, I'll do those. I'll give you a rate for that too. But Specifically, the last few months, I've been focusing on helping men start their corporations because nothing says I'm about I'm free, like having my own company that I can rely on. And I can just part of escaping the psychological chains is removing yourself from the matriarchy. It's removing yourself from the matrix It's getting out of here, and being able to work from overseas. And you can do that or have people working for you if you got your own company. So I'm here to help you get that groundwork started, get your company started, help you get a tax ID number, all those things that um, um, that are necessary uh, for you to get that true independence as a man. Because as long as you got somebody else paying your bills and dictating when you can come to work and when you can't, you're not really free. So uh, let's talk about that too, if you want to. But again, um, Malika, so again, you got SperlingDennis at gmail.com. Send me an email if you want to do a one-on-one -on -one consultation. Malika, you got two minutes, man. What are your thoughts on this? What have you learned thus far in this conversation? We all brothers that have been hurt, abused, and it's not our fault. Mm -hmm. um, but we're all coming out of the muck and the mire. Um, if I can do it, Dennis can do it. Y'all can do it too. Um, we just have to start believing in ourselves and detaching from the matriarchy. It's hard. It's hard because we've been conditioned and we often find ourselves going back. But then, you know, if you're checking yourself, you got to stop. If you want to be your own man, if you want to do what you want to do, if you have dreams, you have goals and aspirations, you have to break the chains from that. If you have desires to just to do what you want, like Dennis has always been telling us, man, travel, go somewhere, get away just to get away and just to have some peace of mind. You know, there are certain lovely ladies in our lives that don't want to see us happy. Mm -hmm. Don't want to see us just thriving on our own. They want us to thrive, but they want to reap the benefits of our labor but they don't want us to thrive without them or without putting them in the forefront. F that. You deal with you. 
we got to deal with each other. We have goals, we have aspirations, we have dreams just to just to have peace, just to go into your own home and have nobody else around to tell you what to do, just to relax and just to sit in somewhere and you say, you know what, I want to go here. Not with somebody telling you well, why you want to go there. Or I want to do this. Like Dennis said, open a corporation or if you want to read a certain book, why are you reading this book here? Why you want to learn about cryptocurrency? Why you want to learn about this? Because I want to, and I'm a man, I have a right to learn about that. That's the thing we got to realize because I want to, and I have a right to. And it took me a long time and a lot of other brothers to say, I have a right to, and I want to, and it's my destiny to do that. That's one thing we got to learn. We got to understand it's our destiny to live the way we want to live. Not the destiny to live how the way somebody wants us to live, but to be the doormat of the world. And that's it. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Afro Patriarch, man, we got two minutes. I want you to get that two minutes in. Thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, so Solo Dolo, appreciate you say embrace. Yeah, embrace being the bad guy. You guys really like that embrace being the bad guy video. I'm, I'm glad. Um, I, 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 say I, was, embrace being, I would say embrace being a conqueror. Right. Well, I mean, you know, that's same thing. That's same thing. One, but I, the video "Embrace Being the Bad Guy" went over very well, and I think people can relate to that. Um, and although "conquer" is a good word, I'm just telling them as far as themselves. Pretty much everything you do is demonized. If you travel overseas, they're gonna call you nasty or some other name. But hell, black men, you know, according to these lovely ladies, uh, eighty percent of Black women are molested before they get to the age of 18. So what is the inference there? They're already calling you nasty and perverted. So you already got the label. You see what I'm saying? And you didn't even do anything to deserve that because even if you look at that study, it's skewed in the first place. But that's the common. We're the, we're the bad guys. So go ahead and embrace it. You know, embrace it. That's what you're going to. They're going to call it anyway. So go ahead and embrace it. Don't run away from it. At least reap the benefits from it of being the bad guy. You know, bad guy doesn't give a crap. Bad guy doesn't care what people think. This is the bad guy. But anyway, Afro Patriot, you got two minutes. As far as breaking the chains, the psychological chains of the black matriarch, what are your thoughts on? I just want to say before I go into that, I uh, read one of you a proverb, Proverb 31, th uh, verse 3. Do not spend your strength on women or your vigor on those who ruin kings. Hmm. And I say to you, men, do not ruin, don't ruin yourself with dealing with any woman that feels that she can disrespect you at any time or place. I don't even accept it from my own mom. Okay? The couple of days ago, I told my mom not to go get the, 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 the shot because I didn't, I didn't, I said, wait a couple months. I mm -hmm. said to her, wait a couple months because this thing, they're still testing it out and people are still dropping dead from it. She has an autoimmune situation. I said, don't mm -hmm. do it. She shrugged me off as she went. She showed me no respect as her oldest boy's son. The kid kid caring for her. But you know what I did? I said, you know what? You just you just uh let go of the of the uh the chains between us. Right. You just let go of the chains between us. And ever since then, I have not had uh, more than a few set thirty seconds or less conversations with my mom. I don't have, need to have to because she did that. She effed up our relationship. Well, what I'm know, here to tell you. Well, that's, I'm, here, that's, well, I'm that's, just saying. Okay. I'm just here to say that you, when people show you who they are, believe them. When they have no respect for you, even for your concerns, and then you know what? Take that's an opportunity. That's an opportunity to just say, you know what? Okay, and move forward. All right. All I want to tell you guys before I go off is this: you guys are kings. Start to carry yourselves like that. And let, right. if, and forget and then the matriarchy the matriarchy is going to do whatever it wants to. Do. All right, we got so you we should got do the same. Running over time now, bro. We okay, okay, to, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. All right, you go. We got one more person that came in, and I want to talk to him too. Armini, thank you, but thank you so much, Africa. Armini, blessed. Welcome back, man. You came in late, but uh, I'll give you a couple of minutes. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I just want to say uh, th thank you guys because this is a little off topic though. But I guess your last two shows talk about embracing the bad guy. That helped me a lot. Um, just even overall daily life. I mean, I live in a white area, but and then w w once I heard that that message he's told me, like, I just kind of embrace it. I don't know why that 
it, it's triggered, it triggered me, it triggered some of my brain. And I'm a lot more calm now when I just walk in, it's like, when I'm just like walking, not really at work though, but just because I don't go to work, I, just, I, work, I work remotely. But just like yeah. walking through all this, like this, uh, you know, like white area or just, or even just, or, or, or the minority though. But I, well, yeah. the point I'm trying to say is that that, that hit me. But yeah, I, I appreciate to see that whole point of what I'm trying to tell you guys is this. People aren't going to see you how they want to see you no matter what. Now, we can do things to try to change our image. But for the most part, this is how they see you. And when you do something, they just, oh, yep, see, told you that's how they are. There, you, You're already the bad guy of this society. There's really nothing more they can say about you. We're, we're, the, we're, the, we're the rapists. We're the robbers. We're the murderers. What else are we lazy? We're no good dad. We don't really have any redeeming qualities in this society. We're not, we don't stereotype. We, what stereotypical qualities do black men have that are, that are positive? I mean, that, that eventually won't. They, everything we say, like the, the old notion, oh yeah, they, they have these huge, you know, man parts. And then what do they say? Oh, well, they're over sexualized. You see what I'm saying? They'll bang anything. This is, the reputation that we have as black men. And what we do as black men, and part of this goes to the conversation we have today, we're trying, we're walking on eggshells trying to prove, oh no, I'm not like that, I'm different. You got dudes wearing dresses trying to prove they're not masculine eye, overly masculine. You got dudes talking with like this, hey, how are you? Code switching and whatnot, trying to pretend that, oh, they're, I'm not like those guys. You're, you're, you're walking on eggshells trying to prove something that they already believe you are anyway, or you're trying to prove that you're an exception. But this, what I'm telling you guys is set down on your heels, embrace yourself for who you are, be yourself, stop performing for people. You don't have to, you're entitled to this, this walk that you have through life and you don't have to have people uh, causing for you to perform like, like a, a circus uh, clown, all right? You're not anybody's, embrace being the bad guy. That was the whole point of that. They're going to think what they're going to think anyway. So hell with it. You know, let them think what they want to do. Okay, you going overseas? All right, I'm going overseas. What you doing? I'm going to go make love to a bunch of women and I'm going to pay them for it. Damn, yeah, that's it. Well, well, I mean, doesn't that make you a pervert? Well, y'all say I'm a pervert here too because I'm. y'all got these lovely ladies that, Sold y'all this line that 80% of women, I'm, uh, uh, of black women, I'm molested before they get 18. So, yeah, you already are. And the inference is that I'm a pervert and I'm descended from perverts. So, who cares? You see what I'm saying, brothers? And people are entitled to say what they want. Oh, you say I'm violent, I'm a thug? Okay. Well, yeah. All right. So, what do you want me to do about it? You want me to run around here with a dress on and talking effeminate and crossing my legs and speaking like this, just so you're not afraid, be afraid. If you're going to be afraid, be afraid. I'm going to embrace being the bad guy. I'm the bad guy. That's what I'm trying to tell you, brothers. Just, you got to stop letting people dictate to you how you should behave. If you're not breaking any laws, you're not bothering anybody, stop seeking validation. Stop seeking their approval, because it's gone from us seeking, seeking Black women's approval and now, what are we doing? We're seeking the rest of society's approval. You got brothers wearing dresses just so they can conform. You got brothers just doing all kinds of weird stuff just so they can conform, just because they so they can be like. This is where we are today, brothers. And so all of this comes from the psychological change. We've been groomed to be like this. And this is not normal. This is not normal. I don't care what anybody tells you. It's not normal. And uh, we're going to talk later on about this subject. Later on in part two, well, I'm going to teach you how to break the psychological chains and the cause for you to feel that you have to seek approval. That's what we're going to do later on. So y'all make sure y'all chime in this evening. Uh, but uh, other than that, thank you for the cash apps and the PayPals and everything. But you guys, I love you. I appreciate you. This is Uncle D. And uh, y'all know what time it is. Time for Uncle D to head on out. And as I always said this time, my mouth. <laughs>